So about a month ago I got this PAP K3 Plus. Looks like this on the front, this on the back. It's got all these ports. And I updated it, let's just show you, to use level by level gaming's menu. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's got this great fish that comes up every time. And this is level by level gaming's menu, which is pretty good. It's got all these emulators, but I was having a hard time getting the uh, save states to work. That was my main complaint. And so then, just turn it off here. I went over to uh, the Ding UX, Dingix menu by Jack. That was all right, but I had to go in and change all the settings to work with this device. So what I've got going on now is <clears throat> a custom menu. Everything laid out the way I like. And you can download it for yourself. I'll put a link in the bottom if you're interested. So I've got it sorted in and out of games. Then we got best emulators, more emulators, alternate emulators. So I'll just scroll through a little bit and let you see how the menus work. These are mostly the alternative emulators from Jack's menu in the preferred or whatever favorite emulators section. They all work good, real well. More emulators, we've got some weird ones that uh, don't run, I'll show you, they don't run right into the game. They go right to the emulator and then you have to find the game. So that's kind of why they're in this folder by themselves. Because they all kind of pop up a weird emulator first. Whereas the ones in best emulators, like the Game Boy Advance. The way I have this organized is everything is in a ROMs folder and then different folders for the games and then there's favorites folders to make it a little easier since I have a bazillion games. It's a lot easier for me to just go to the favorites folder there. <clears throat> so we'll pop into the favorites folder. Do uh, I've been playing Metroid Fusion? Go to that one. And so these emulators just work full screen. You don't have to go to the uh, emulator thing first. You can get into the settings and change all that. You can change the uh, screen size if you don't like it being full screen. I like it full screen. Just exit out of there. Save states and everything work too. So that's important. Okay, so we've got favorite emulators. You can see what all those are again, real quick. Oh, it's actually called Best Emulators. I changed the name a few times. More Emulators. That's these ones. And I've got MAME and PlayStation on there, but they don't work. So if anybody knows how to get those working, that'd be great. I'll show you what they do uh, in a second, because they're going to crash it. So we'll go to Alternate Emulators. And then we've got these other uh, emulators, and these are mostly the ones that came with the device that are kind of buggy, but they do work, and they're there just in case you uh, have a problem getting a ROM to run on one of the best emulators. Then we got the music. I went ahead and left the music in there. I got some, well, I better play some free music here. I put one on here that's copyright free. Let's see. Well, that works just fine. And then I left the pictures in there too, the manufacturer picks, duplicate background, some other pictures I threw in uh, so that you can change the background with those pictures if you want. Then in system, I sort of streamlined this. We've got background. You can pick through a bunch of different backgrounds. I preloaded some on there. Font color, you can change the font color around. I like it all white with this background sound. I went ahead and name these just so it's easier to know what they are. 
I like it on piano quiet just because it's quieter. It sounds a little bit more chill. <clears throat> file browser, shutdown. Shutdown will obviously shut it down. File browser will take you into the uh, DGE or DXE or something commander. I don't know a lot about it. But it works just fine. You can copy files back and forth between the internal and external card. So that's cool. And then I'll show you what happens with um, MAME and PlayStation. So MAME, if we get down there, it does this. Load a game there, Zaxxon. Just opens like that, and then any button I push, you'll see, any, it doesn't matter, any button. Usually just closes it right out to the menu again. <clears throat> and PlayStation is a little worse, because you can load it up. You get this thing there. If anybody wants to know what the info is, maybe that would help getting it to work. Let's see if we can focus again. But anyway, there you go. I tried messing with the graphics options and such. Uh, it doesn't really work good. So if we go to file options, I have to navigate real quick. Uh, load a game. And you have to copy your own BIOS in for this too, but there's no point at this point because it doesn't work. So let's see, I want to go to my ROMs. I've got a bunch of them in there. These are all the systems that it currently does and two that don't work like MAME and PSX. Alundra, it works with ISOs apparently, although again it doesn't work. Uh, yes, I want to do it. Loading BIOS. Loaded. And it does this. And there's no sound either on this particular emulator version. So it'll go there, it'll never load the game, and then it will freeze and you have to hard reset it. So they are unstable. But that is what I've got, and the install process is very easy. I'll run through that real quick for you. Let's uh, just pop the card out. So all you have to do, you got to boot it up. There's no getting rid of the fish or the <laughs> Street Fighter or whatever it is at the end when you shut it down. That's just the way it is. So let's say you're back in this one. Let's say you got a level by levels menu. Uh, otherwise you probably have a you know, menu that has a file browser, one would hope. And if you go to that file browser, <clears throat> so this is great because you don't have to take your card out. I didn't want to keep busting this thing open. I already screwed up the start button a little bit. So I'm going to go over to the file browser, previous directory, SD card, D menu, installer, install.dge. Just let that focus. Install.dge. Open. That's going to reboot. Boom. Comes up with mine. Thank you, Jack, for setting that up. I just piggybacked off of that setup. And there you go. So then you're into my menu with all this stuff. Hooray. Um, and then if you shut it down with the card in. Street Fighter or whatever. If you shut it down with the card in, it will reboot back up to that menu. Come on. Focus. Okay, there you can see the menu. We don't need to focus really. You can see it's coming up. There we go. Turn it off again. Street Fighter. And we will pop out the card. You can see the card's now out. Street Fighter shut down. Turn it back on. And now you can see it's back to Jack's, or sorry, level by levels menu, which is the menu that I have installed on the internal card when I took it apart. So it's as easy as that. It's a pretty good menu. Um, the directory structure and all that I, I can probably put down in the description, but it's basically just ROMs is the folder on the external SD card. I run all the ROMs and everything off of that. <clears throat> and uh, that's all you really need to mess with. Now there's two settings that are fixed because I could not figure out how they worked. I could not get them to work rather in the menu. Both things I guess. Don't know how they work. Couldn't get them to work in my menu and that is there's no brightness control it is permanently set on 20 percent brightness now i'm sorry 18 percent brightness which seems to be plenty bright as you can see 
and makes the battery last a lot longer than it did when I first had the menu when it was set for 100 and here I'll pop my menu up so you can see the brightness again the other setting is that it is set to start up with volume at I think 25 percent which works really well for the sounds that I have on here but if you switch it to say gunshots might be a bit loud Shots. But again, I made this for myself, so it's the settings as I prefer them. But I figure a lot of people might want to have a go at it, and also uh, might be able to help me get these darn MAME or PlayStation emulators working. I'd also like to get some uh, Doom or Quake or whatever else kind of 3D shooters that, that can actually run on similar devices going on one of these. If anyone you know can work on that code for that. I'm pretty much at my limit is what I can do with this. I've sorted through and uh, so far I've, I've hit the wall so maybe I'll come back to it in a week or so and see if I can do any more but for now this is what we're working with. And uh, yeah, I'll just show you a little bit of gameplay to wind out the video here. I like the advance. never had one. It's pretty cool to play a lot of these games. And I could never play before. Especially the Metroid games that I like. So I'll just pop up. And later I can load my save state. Boom, no problem. And that's that. Thanks for watching.